Pilot Boys in the building. Let's go. Pilot Boys, we get on up. We go fly, boys, we get up. So. You listen to the Pilot Boys podcast. We have a very special guest in the house today. Former Ohio State wide receiver and now New York Giant, Austin Mack. Austin, what's up? Welcome to the show. What's going on, Mecca and V, man? Appreciate you having me. No, I see, no I see that, that, I see that quarantine beard is growing just like mine. Man, it's getting nice. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So let's jump right into it, man. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the draft, obviously, and, and, and kind of how that went in that process. Obviously, you're in New York now. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that, like just – you know, what that process was like, and how did you end up in New York? Yeah, man, it was a stressful three three days. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, uh, ever since you left Ohio State, I mean, it's just the combine training. You go through the combine, you hope that there's a pro day. But for us, with the pandemic and what Rona's been doing to everything, uh, it kind of pushed everything back. So it's kind of, you know, you're still training. Uh, if right. possible, try and get a virtual pro day in uh, for some. But at the most, just try and stay fit, healthy um, until combine came. I mean, it was so up in the air for a guy, especially like me, who were, you know, not guaranteed top, you know, three round guys. Um, so it was kind of just up in the air. You didn't know what team you're going to go to or who really had interest. So, right. um, yeah, it was it was different. And, so how, after- and how how stressful was that? Um, you had the the NFL combine, and after the combine, you probably fully anticipated also having a pro day to kind of find that out. How, how was that? How did you take that? And how did you just manage that, that part of it as well? Yeah, man. But, you know, mostly just trying to, uh, you know, stay at peace and, and really uh, fine tune, just knowing that I can only can control so much. Right. And just making sure I'm doing the most that I can uh, with what the opportunities that I'm given. And uh, no matter what, just believe in that, as God's plan, I'm gonna be good either way. So, um, right. you know, just just excited for what's to come, and just being in the now, and knowing that right now it was either training, right now it was either go to the combine, or right now it's just trying to stay quarantined. So, uh, right, just 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 like that. And after the draft, you ended up in New York um, as a giant pretty quickly. I mean, that was announced not, yeah. not that long after. Talk to us about how that that process and in terms of choosing what team. Uh, you ended up going to? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I really, my agent was the front runner with uh, trying to speak to teams and uh, came down to, uh, you know, I think in my terms, a really good fit. And, uh, man, I'm just excited to be a giant and uh, excited for the future. Yeah. One other question, too, about just Ohio State receivers in general. Obviously, um, you know, not having, like you said, a, a pro day, I think, hurt a couple of you guys you know with Benjamin and obviously KJ I don't think any of you guys kind of went where you got where we think you guys should have gone in terms of just like value um but I think you guys all ended up in good places but why do you think generally Ohio State receivers get slept on it's not just this year I mean Terry went in the third round you know Mike Thomas went in the second round guys that we feel like their value isn't as high as it should be why do you think that is um I think for you know the 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 draft and everything. It's more of the the media led uh, story. It's kind of what the narrative is around you. Um, a lot of our guys uh, at Ohio State, man, we're just we're tough, we're dirty, but I mean, we're not gonna have flashy stats. Um, mm-hmm. And it's gonna be you know, especially after that 2015 year when it was uh, 2016 um, with JT in that in that full room. I mean, there's just so many guys. I mean, so many guys with a lot of talent. So it was, you know, really a rotation, but everybody just wanted each other to be successful. And there was no just we – didn't, we didn't really care about anything else. I mean, right. in, the, in the way that the room just ran, even the coaches, it's not like we want to get somebody a 1,000 yards or this person so many yards. It's like, what can we do the most for the team? And, um What's, 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 you know, better to know is that the Ohio State receivers that they do take, I mean, they're balling. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. no it. matter where you at, like, I mean, we got a good resume of guys that are, that are doing pretty well. So I'm pretty confident, you know, that it'll continue on. So that's, that's what's most exciting. And you mentioned like just how deep the receivers room was, like all of you guys coming from high school to Ohio State were used to being, 
the man, right? Like the ball was going to you every time a QB dropped back. But with Ohio State and the multiple receiver sets, does that get challenging at, at times? Because you want in high school, it's like when there was a play, you know, with the ball was coming to you going to college and knowing there are multiple other guys who kind of have that same feeling and it's got to get spread out a little bit. Yeah. So like coming in, man, I, I didn't, I didn't, my sole purpose was to start, you know, I wanted to get on the field as much as possible. So like, I never had any desire to like, oh, I need to get the ball. I need, I, shit, I was out there for one or two plays. I was happy if it was the last yeah. thing <laughs> right. against Army, right? Yeah. right. The older, the older you got too, um, I think it's just the culture and the type of cultures we have that just instilled in us this unselfishness that, man, I really, sophomore, junior, I really didn't care. Like, I was just like, I'm hoping we all eat. There's plenty of times where uh, my junior year when, you know, Johnny and uh, Terry were playing the Z position, there was times where Terry had a touchdown. They were about to call another play for the Z to score. He pulled himself out, put Johnny in, and gave him that touchdown. Like, there's wow. we got multiple stories like that where, you know, it's just this unselfishness in that room. Now, when I got to a senior and, you know, obviously, personally, I, and this, this is when I, I felt I felt that the most. And I was I was uh, really having to gravitate towards Terry, Johnny and Paris when they were going through it. Because when you're a young guy, you know, you got another year. You're not really thinking about it. But when you know this is your last year, this got to be your money year. I had started the season off with a couple of hamstrings. Um, so I was already late to the ball game, then again into the season, and you might see one or two balls, but beating beating the hell out of teams. So it's like mm-hmm. I'm only playing a half. So it's not like there's a ton of balls going around, and we're, I mean we're running running the ball really well. So there's a there was a point in the season where it was like, man, I'm frustrated because these yeah. stats ain't going isn't going to get me drafted. But that's mm-hmm. when I had to talk with Terry. That's when I had to talk with everybody, um, my old heads, and it was really just let them know that it's going to be good no matter what, you know, they know your talent, they know where you're coming from and they know your situation. So it was more of just being okay with that and like accepting our role as a team and as a leader, that that's not the type of vibes that we need to have in the receiver room, being a leader and being uh, an older guy. So uh, definitely challenging, but it was definitely, uh, it was definitely uh, something to go through. Sorry. So overall, yeah. it seems like you you. How do you kind of sum up your your career at Ohio State? Because I think for, personally, I feel like you know you're one of the best receivers that I've seen in terms of, especially in terms of route running that's ever come through Ohio State. I think that you know, obviously, given the amount of different receivers that we had, and then also some, certain injuries, you probably didn't get to produce like you would like to. But when you look back, right. how do you feel about your career? Oh, man, just overall, when I when I think of my career, man, I'm just I'm super thankful and blessed for it because, one, making that decision not only got me to play at Ohio State, but the amount of people I met along the way and me just developing as a man overall um, and getting my degree is what this I'm most proud about. Like, you know, if, if uh, everybody wishes they could have a thousand yards for multiple touchdowns, but in reality – the, the trials that I went through and, and, and the struggles I went through, man, in the long run, I'm more proud of because it's, it's changed me and grew me into, into some, something so much more. Tell, tell us a little bit about having a major injury, right? Like when you're younger, you're, you're not necessarily thinking like that. And then for the first time you have a major injury where you just can't yeah. play. Like yeah. walk us through that, like the mental aspect of that. <laughs> as well as the on-field part of that, knowing what you're capable of, but that you're just physically limited and you have no control over over that situation. Yeah, that was uh, – yeah, so I broke my foot. That was in Purdue my uh, junior year. And that was a, I was having a decent year. Um, even possibly might have thought there was conversation about even you know, I wanted to declare if the season finished off good um, to it just abruptly stopping. And yeah. mm-hmm. when it comes to – when you, when you love something so much and, and you think this is everything you want for it to just get taken from you, like just as a man, like there'd be times where I'd be sitting in my room and I'm watching the Maryland game at home in bed that year and, and we're losing and I'm just sitting there mad, you know, just mad. And it's like this internal struggle, this internal fight was like, it, I didn't know what it was. And there was a time where 
um, I really told myself, I said, all right, I got to figure out what's up. Cause like, who are you? You know, like football mm -hmm. ain't going to last forever. So for you to be acting like this or feeling like this, this mentality, it, it ain't healthy. And, uh, an injury and anything like that is so real. And for me to just been so blind for it, you know, I'm glad it happened then and not, right. you know what I'm saying, in a couple of years. So, right. This is one of the most, that was probably the hardest thing I ever had to go through in my life was that, that six, seven month period. Um, but man, incredibly strong from that. Yeah. Talk to us too about, about, you know, another issue that we, we haven't really mentioned yet in terms of kind of, um, at least some of the, I don't want to call it struggle, but some of the issues that you had to deal with at Ohio State is you dealt with, you know, multiple different quarterbacks, right? You dealt with, you know, at least from, what, you know, JT and uh, obviously Dwayne Haskins and, and then Justin Fields this past year. Talk to us a little bit about, about the differences between them and what the offenses were like with those guys. Yeah, so um, JT and Justin are a lot, very similar. Um, guys that are, you know, we call it that 12th, or the 11 man element. Usually, when you have a pro style quarterback like Dwayne, it's 11 defenders against 10 offensive players, you know, because the quarterback's never mm. really a factor. Um, mm. and, and with Justin and JT being able to run, man, it makes, it makes things a lot, a lot easier because um, you're able to do a lot more. Uh, and that's something that Coach Ma really wanted to hone in on. Um, with having Coach Day and that new evolved offense coming through, especially when we started with. Um, Dwayne and then moving forward, man, it was so fun. Um, obviously, with Dwayne, yeah. we, we threw the ball a lot more than we did with the other two quarterbacks, but at the end of the day, it's just whatever you need for the team. So, um, being a, a quarterback guy for as a receiver, you know, you want to be friendly for everybody, just being able to be in your spot. That's the number one thing I did. You know, I didn't care if it was, um, you know, Corey Curtis or you know, anybody. As long as I'm in my spot and it's and it's we're able to make that connection, that's easy. We just had to make sure we have that communication. Um, the only time I, you know, Justin really had me on, was on my nerves was that first week, and he was trying to throw 100 miles per hour, you know, <laughs> ball straight at. <laughs> like, hey, bro, <laughs> you know, right, calm down. Right, but uh, right. but no, man, it's it, what's the ceiling? What's with, the ceiling for Justin? What's his ceiling? I ain't gonna put put no. I ain't going to make no standards for him, but, man, he's a ta super talented dude, and I think I, there's a lot that he can grow in. Um, being a guy that played with him and has played with, like, a JT coming in, he, I seen, like, the elite to a Dwayne becoming, you know, an elite and seeing where he's at, he, he can grow a lot, and I'm super excited for him when it comes to his, just his raw passionate, passionate abilities and also being able to scramble. So um, right. he's, he's going to be very elite. Spe speaking about your skill set for a second, um, what do you think are the attributes you have as a receiver that put you in the mm -hmm. best position to succeed as an NFL receiver? Obviously, you haven't even fully scratched the surface of your potential yet either. Right. But what do you think are your your strongest attributes in your position? Right. Like how you said earlier, Mecca, man, just a great runner. Uh, Fine-tune that gift, um, knowing that I'm not going to go out there and run a 4-2, so I'm not going to blaze by anybody, but – defense has to run just as fast as me. And I promise you, I'm going to stop faster than you uh, and get to the ball. <laughs> right, so right, so right. just being able to, 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 to have great routes, great feet, and then also just being knowledgeable with the game, making, making and knowing where the defense is going to be. So it's easier for me and not less uh, strenuous. Right. When we look back at, at Ohio state, like your, your time period that you've been there pretty much the last decade, you know, obviously mm -hmm. since urban got there, um, there have been a lot of special talent that's come through there i mean it's it's ridiculous you know and um so you know as a fan you know as a f former player and as a fan and we look at things differently than people who are actually in the locker room and one question i have for you is did you realize i mean obviously you just f are fresh out of ohio state but did you realize how special it was like every day in practice how special it was what you were a part of i didn't really understand that until my senior year um mm. There was a, I think it was either in camp or going into camp. Coach um, challenged us to, man, create a goal. It doesn't, it doesn't, maybe it's call your mom every day or maybe it's, you know, brush your teeth. I mean, whatever goal it was for you, right? Uh, create mm -hmm. that goal. My goal was to learn everybody's name in the facility. 
and mm. be able to make that interaction. I was in the training room so much that I knew every training staff, plus they're all their assistants, plus the cleaning people that came in. And right. I was able to see Ohio State and the structure of it from, from everybody that helps me just be able to go out there and play at my best. And mm. it's a humbling thing. And being able to say that they care about us, really understand that they care about us so much and about Ohio State, that's really what it means to be a Buckeye. And um, you don't really know that until you're in, the, in there and you're with them for – for that amount of time. So that's what yeah. that's really that's really cool to me. I mean, I think the world pretty much knows how special of a place Ohio State is as far mm -hmm. as a football school, right? But I think what's kind of very special about you is the advantage you took of the opportunity it creates for you off the field, right? As well. Mm -hmm. with, you mentioned your degree. Um and you also start an organization called Ross. Can you just take us into that? a little bit in your experience at Ohio State as a student as well. Oh, yeah. Um, well, it really just came from, uh, you know, one of my freshman year, sophomore year, going through um, school and football, and there was nothing else. There was no more substance. And to me, like, I just feel like you need more to life than just, you know, your football and, and your school. Like, there's 60,000 students at Ohio State, and I only know maybe 2% because right. I haven't been able to just expand my horizon. There's so many people with talents, hobbies, passions, like, and, and Ohio State's like another city amongst its mm -hmm. own, and it's just being able to find that. So we would, one of our advisors, uh, with Sasso, would always put together, like, these nice little meetings on Sundays where some of the minority kids, uh, male athletes, would just come together, we'll chop it up, you know what I'm saying, uh, have some – had something to eat. And there'd be one, there was one day where it was, uh, I think it was 2017 summer, where we was like, let's make this into something. Because one, like the access, the reach that we could do and, and a lot of the positive we can come from it. And um, we did. We, it was about nine founders of us. We put it together, um, created an organization called Redefining Athletic Standards, um, which the goal is basically to bridge the gap between you know, athletes and regular students to create a, uh, more opportunities for athletes to, to find success and opportunity to not just be athletes, but to give them a why, which I'm a full believer in, um, and, and to just give more business opportunities to, to these kids and, and create relationships. Um, there's a, a lot of things we've done. Like we would do a lot of events, uh, that were more specific to athlete schedules um, mm -hmm. because most of the stuff like, you know, BSA or all these other, they're on a Wednesday night or a Saturday, you know, during the day. And it's like, no athlete can make that, especially football players. So um, one of the coolest things to me is that I used to know all the football players, but I didn't know none of the track players. I didn't know our track runners. I didn't know none of the soccer players. Mm -hmm. Didn't even know we had a fencer and a, and a gymnast, but now, <laughs> now I know all these other people. And, right. and, and, uh, to me, that's, that's the coolest thing being able to just create something organic, another brotherhood on, you know, that's all student led, um, on campus. Um, that was, you know, a lot of fun and, uh, and, and it was, I think very beneficial. Well, one thing, one thing we always liked about you, you know, is that you, you know, thought outside of the typical stereotypical box, right. Of an athlete. And, mm -hmm. you know, you actually learned a lot of this stuff and started implementing some of this stuff in college. A lot of guys who actually do realize that this is, you know, there's more to life than, than football. They don't start till much later, but it seems like you already started early. And, mm -hmm. and I guess along those lines, you also kind of have an idea, you know, maybe not fully fleshed out, but a kind of goals of where you want your life to go and other things that you want to get involved in as you progress in your career and even beyond. Talk to us a little bit, about some of those things. What are some of the things that you that you are going to be looking to do as you continue to grow in your career and beyond? Right, yeah. I, I'm really passionate um, in group economics, uh, entrepreneurship, private equity. Um, so let me put that in a little easier term. Group economics basically is the fluctuation of money within a community. So I'm big into understanding. I came from the south side of my, my town in Fort Wayne and I always had to go to the north side of town, to the malls or the west side. And it's those neighborhoods are the suburbs where all the you know, nice things are at. And so for me, mm -hmm. I want to be able to create a system where you're able to 
not see a difference in economic structure. You know, that's my end all be, go be all goal. Um, but also, I'm, I'm big into, into entrepreneurship, uh, you know, ownership, being able to, uh, you know, own something, grow it, and then see it fruition. And that's that goes right in hand with um, uh, group economics. You know, you want to have people who want to own markets, who want to own the, uh, you know, the the stores and everything that helps put a put a community together. Um, mm -hmm. So big and also the real estate. You know, I think that's probably one of the best assets that you can you can have um land there isn't there is more can't create no more land and uh right i think right you know you 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 understand what increases the value of land i think you can uh you know make a pretty decent profit off of that as well so um i signed with uh vayner sports uh, and i think gary v who's the owner of that man he's one of the best um venture capitalists in the country which is starting up a business and uh, and he's extremely smart in what he's doing, and I'm trying to eventually learn off to him and their their access and their relationships to help grow myself as a businessman and a pro. So. I, th I think the group economics thing is 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 fascinating to me because it's one of the things that I always kind of talk about. Is it's like we always glorify individuals, right, becoming mm -hmm. rich and becoming successful, but it's completely different a different mentality to think about. I want to advance mm -hmm. a group of people with me, not just my own self-interest. I think that's powerful. And I just wanted to kind of hear what inspired you or who inspired you to start thinking, thinking along those lines. Oh um, man, it was, it was really just more of my own struggle. Um, in 2007, like a lot of people, uh, my family hit, hit from it worse and pops, uh, you know, worked for uh, FedEx, you know, a company FedEx and uh, making 15 a week, which at the time was great. You know, we'd ever go to Tours R Us whenever I wanted as a kid and, you know, could have any game, right? To then him, you know, you know, becoming unemployed and, and everything disappearing to almost having to be on the street. And that's when uh, I'd really start to, you know, fine tune and understand uh, about, like, hey, like if you don't pay your rent, you know, you won't be able to live here anymore. Because, you know, when you're a kid, you don't know anything. You're just, you're just living there, right? Yeah. And I started, mm -hmm. I started to just learn these little tools of, you know, housing and living and this and that. And I'd see the neighborhoods and where it's easier to afford to live and where it's harder to, to afford to live. And, and I always had these questions. And as I got older, I had, you know, great mentors, um, you know, like Mike Lito and Trey Muhammad were my mentors from Fort Wayne. And, uh, they eventually put a word to it and that was group economics. And, uh, and, and they instilled in me a lot of this business minded, um, you know, curiosity. And uh, I've kind of self-taught myself a lot of it and really read into a lot of, um, you know, great entrepreneurs and businessmen. Um, but that's really my story. So. That's great. Let me get uh, back to a little, a little bit of football uh, stuff before we get you out of here. Uh, one question that, you know, I just think Buckeye fans probably want to know the answer to is, you know, you actually got a chance to play with, obviously, with Urban Meyer and also under Ryan Day. Talk to us a little bit about them and what are some of the differences between them as coaches? Yeah. Um, first off, both great men, um, just great people, individuals, um, but they're both on the opposite spectrum <laughs> um, of coaching. Um, right. it's, it's honestly... Uh, it's crazy, but uh, I mean, Coach Coach Meyer was more of a guy who was very direct, very uh, loud. I mean, he, sometimes you'd be pissed off at him, but you got to bite your tongue and move on. Right. Um, you know, and Coach Day is a little bit more logical, a little bit more um, less forego, but more give you a chance, make your mistakes, and then come talk to you. Uh, um, but he can still get after it. Don't get me wrong; he can still get after right. it pretty much, but. Um, Coach Coach Meyer really really used fear tactic uh, at at its utmost. While uh, Coach Day was a little bit more, I want to say lax, but not as you know up there. So right. Yeah. And then and then last last question I have for you is just really just talk to the Giants fans. You know they're obviously Ohio State fans and Big Ten fans and even beyond that, no <laughs> Austin Mac. But maybe there are a lot of Giants fans who who haven't been exposed to you yet. Talk to them a little bit. Tell them what type of player it is that they're getting and what they can expect from you, you know, as the, your continue continues, continues to go. Oh yeah. No doubt, man. This one, this is a fighter, man. Uh, a really good overall football player. Uh, excited to be in uh, New York and, and to be around 
um, you know, that, that company of that excellence of that, of that, uh, that organization and club, um, really just trying to first and foremost, know what it's like to be a pro, learn what it's like to be a pro and, and, uh, and take it day by day to, to eventually make that team. Um, that's my goal right now, starting today. And they're, they're getting somebody that's going to, you know, put, do everything you can for, for the team's success. So, Yeah. And wanted to circle back for a second also, because you mentioned Gary V earlier, and now you're going to probably have more access considering you guys are both in New York. Right. He's, he's, he's a well-known Jets fan, of course, but just right. tell us into your thought process of picking him and why, he was ins- inspirational to you and how your conversations with him have been. Man, they've all been really good. Um, as soon as I decided to go with the Giants, he said, welcome to New York. So I've, so nothing, mm-hmm. no, no envy yet or any, any beef yet with them. But, uh, <laughs> right. Right. Um, but man, geez, geez, a brilliant dude. Um, it's still kind of, uh, that's, I really don't get starstruck or usually have issues asking questions, but that's one of them dudes where, you respect his time so much and, and who he mm-hmm. is that, you know, before you even want to talk to him, you got to make sure you come, you know, correct. So uh, every time I do, man, it's, it's always, he's, he's very humble and he's always full arms and giving me a, a complete response. And, and uh, when it came to making that decision, uh, me, I just think when, you, when you're looking for an agent, it's more of the agency rather than the agent. An agent can only do so much. And uh, when you, when you go with an agency who has the access and who has the, the marketing ability and all the things that Vayner Sports has, man, it's, I just think, think you can't, you can't go wrong with it. So I'm excited to keep learning from him uh, as the years, years go and see where this, this, go, uh, this venture goes. So excited. Well, that's awesome, man. I guess it's going to be different, man. This, this, this obviously, you know, as fans, we're like really missing sports and, <laughs> you no, know, no. we're hoping that we can get, we can get back to it. And, you know, we're obviously really excited for you, and in your career, and, and we hope everything works out for you in New York. Um, so, you know, that. definitely keep us posted. And uh, thank you for joining us on the Pilot Boys podcast, man. I appreciate you, Mac MV. You know, take All care. Right, Stay safe. All right, Austin. Have a good one. All right, peace.